Good morning and welcome to you, wherever you are, on this our Sunday morning Eucharist, on the fifth Sunday of Easter. We meet as the Lord's people, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Christ, our Passover Lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us, therefore, rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thoughts and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. 
through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. collect for today, the fifth Sunday of Easter. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, have overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that, as by your grace going before us, you put into our minds good desires, so by your continual help, we may bring them to good effect through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go towards the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. And now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home, seated in his chariot. He was reading the prophet Isaiah. And then the Spirit said to Philip, Go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, Do you understand what you are reading? He replied, How can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this, Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, About whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? 
he commanded the chariot to stop and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water and Philip baptised him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because nothing apart from me can you do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. I wonder if you ever receive bizarre and random emails asking you for something or to do something. Well, I received one such email a couple of days ago. It was from somebody I'd never heard of, and he asked me if I would simply take him through my diary after a few, over the course of a few weeks. This, I thought, was a strange and random request. Who would be interested in my diary? Well, it transpires that the person that was asking is putting himself forward for ordination, and he had been asked to speak to a priest to find out what happens in the life of a priest on an ongoing basis. So I will speak to this person and I will tell them about the burial of ashes, funerals, recording services such as this, services in church on a Sunday, morning prayer on a Tuesday and a Thursday, the midweek Eucharist, and all the other stuff we do as a church, popping into the food cupboard and the shop. And hopefully it will enthuse this person in some way to get a better understanding of the life and work of a parish priest. But the one thing I probably won't be saying to him, but perhaps should, is that I'll be spending a serious amount of time abiding. That would feel a strange thing to put into your weekly or monthly schedule. I'm going to spend between X time and Y time on a given day abiding. And I'm going to do it again a couple of times a week. He might think that if I was to say, I spend three sessions a week, say, abiding, I'm a bit odd. Especially as abiding sounds an old-fashioned form of religious word. And yet in the gospel reading we have heard, Jesus repeatedly instructs his disciples to abide, to abide in him as he abides in them, with the promise and the consequence of, of this being that if we spend some time abiding, we will bear much fruit. So what is this abiding all about? Why should we do it? What does it mean to abide and to abide in the vine? It's a strange, old-fashioned religious word, isn't it? 
to abide. I bet not many of you this week will think about, I'm just off to do some abiding. It would be an odd thing to do. But my best understanding is simply this. To abide means to make the deliberate choice to spend time quietly, without our own agenda, maybe without our own intercessions with Jesus. Spending time alone, quietly with Jesus. Allowing ourselves to be loved by Jesus and to be ministered to by Jesus. And allowing ourselves to know that we are loved and cherished. And that Jesus simply wants to grow us into a form of fresh, plump fruit. Fruit that's good and tasty and lasts. Hence the metaphor of the vine. So we need to spend some time alone with Jesus. Quietly, allowing ourselves to be simply ministered to and tended to. Allowing the things that we ought to get rid of, be got rid of. Allowing the goodness within us to grow and allowing Jesus to simply do his work to create fruit within us, fruit that will last. And I guess that's what happened to Philip. Philip had learned to abide with Jesus, the by now risen Jesus, being ministered to by Jesus. And this strange thing happens to Philip. The Holy Spirit prompts him to go and walk the road from Jerusalem to Gaza, which is a dusty and arid back road in bandit territory. And there he encounters the Ethiopian eunuch, who desires to know more about the scriptures and the Messiah. And then the most remarkable things happen. They find what the reading describes as some water. Not the River Galilee, not sanctified water, probably some form of ditch or puddle. And the Ethiopian eunuch is then baptized. And that in itself is an extraordinary event. Because Philip would have known the law. And if you go to the book of Deuteronomy, it has the uh, instruction that nobody whose genitals have been crushed or penis cut should be allowed into the assembly of God. It's the most remarkable thing that Philip does because he is open to the work of the Holy Spirit. And he's open to the work of the Holy Spirit very probably because he spent some time abiding. If we abide, we will find that we get taken in new and maybe uncomfortable directions, that we will be called upon to meet some strange and unusual people and maybe to do some strange and unusual things. But the reality is, is that is how the kingdom grows and expands, not by keeping things safe and secure and domesticated and just to people like me and you, but to people beyond our normal remit, people who we wouldn't normally encounter. And the kingdom of God grows through that. But the first point that we must do is to learn to abide, to let Jesus minister to us so that we become open to the work of the Holy Spirit, that we love, know that we are loved and cherished and affirmed, so that we can go and love, cherish, affirm, sanctify, and invite others into the company of God so that they too will learn the noble and ancient art of abiding and in their turn take the story forward. Without that encounter, it may well have been that there would never have been an Ethiopian church. So from abiding to fruitfulness to expansion of the gospel is the pattern that we have learned about in today's reading. And my encouragement to you is simply this. Open your diaries and put a couple of hours a week in it simply to abide and to know that you are loved 
by the one who wants to minister to you, Jesus Christ, our risen Saviour, so that you, in turn, may go out and love and bear fruit, fruit which will last. Amen. So let us affirm our faith with the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So let us pray. We have come from different places with different prayers in our hearts and different challenges in our lives. But united now with one voice, we say thank you, Jesus, for uniting us through your love and rooting us in our church fellowship where we can grow and play and learn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
dear God, when we are tempted to go our own way. Forgive us and draw us back to the vine of your church. When we are tempted to ignore the worries of our friends, forgive us and draw us back to the vine of your kindness. When we are tempted to stop praying for the needs of the world, forgive us and draw us back to the vine of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we thank you that we can always come to you and trust you with the things in our lives that need to be quietly nurtured and regularly pruned. We thank you for the fruits that you had allowed us to bear with the work of the food cupboard, the shop, and all the labors of the St. Lawrence community to build your kingdom. Shape us and keep us rooted in your love, that we may be strong in our faith and gentle in our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those people affected by the pandemic, and in particular, those people in India who are enduring a terrible crisis, a humanitarian crisis. At this time, we know that you are with those who suffer. May your comfort be known by those in that darkest valley, and we pray that help will reach all of those that need it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you for connecting us all through your love. We pray for all of those who feel alone, disconnected or abandoned by their families, their friends or their communities. We pray especially for those we know who are having a difficult time. We pray for those who need special reassurance and understanding. Help them to feel your presence with them. And help us to be people who bring hope and love to others. In particular, we pray for Roy, Pippa, Shirley, Liam, Jane, Sylvia, Susie, Christopher, Joshua, Heather, Noel, Penny, everyone at Swan House, Harry, Barbara, Linda. We remember before God those who have died, and from our book of remembrance, we remember Louise Madeline Wig. Reginald Ayers Bow, Dennis Taylor, Gwendolyn Chapman. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light that no darkness can quench. Let us be strong in Jesus and flourish. Let us be rooted in Jesus and fruitful. Let us abide in Jesus and be blessed. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. And then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And if you're able to, please do share that peace with other people.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For He is your living Word. Through Him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through Him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving Him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised Him from the dead and exalted Him to your right hand on high. Therefore, with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forevermore praising you and singing. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honor and glory and honor be yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The body of Christ, broken for us. The blood of Christ shed for us. Eternal God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, Grant us to walk in his way, to rejoice in his truth, and to share his risen life, who is alive and reigns, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those people that you love, this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.
Jesus.